This is Wharf Watch. This is the last of our low town districts. Uh, it has a two foot by two foot footprint. It's built on three of our new uh, breakers terrain trays and one of our sculpted texture battle boards. Uh, this set features a whole bunch of our field stone and our dark roofs. And most notably, because we created this for the pledge manager, it has uh, the sets that we created during the Kickstarter or after the Kickstarter. So it's got a bunch of sort of newer sets in it and sets that we didn't manage to get into the other districts. Uh, notably, it features the water wheel. Uh, it has the new uh, half arches uh, pack, two of those. So there's lots of these half arches for urban elevation. It has the cathedral walls and post pack. It has the narrow uh, window dressing pack. It also has the original window dressing pack, which didn't make it into any other uh, districts. And uh, I'm not sure what else, but it's it's a delightful collection of uh, field stone, dark roofs, urban elevation, a little bit of uh, scaffolding, and just a hint of dressing. This thing would pair fantastically with uh, both downtown Dockside and or the Elven Trading Post if you want to create a large, bustling seaport. Uh, in particular, it complements uh, both of those sets well because this is fieldstone heavy. Uh, we also have uh, these leftover pieces over here. So you have a bunch of other uh, building options. All right, now let's dive in and look at some of the details on this thing. So up front, we are, uh, we are building on our new terrain trays. These are our water texture. Uh, they're terrain trays with the water texture overlays on them. So this is the uh, convex curve and a pair of straights. Um, and it just gives a great base for any sort of watery build in this case. Uh, or sure, our pier, our jetty, and our, our docks. Here. So we're using the uh, four inch scaffolding and the diagonal scaffolding to create, and with uh, pilings in the high mode to create a uh, extended diagonal dock up there. And the back of this is just resting on the, uh, the large side of the seawalls. We are, we've got three of these seawalls around here is forming a base for this. This is a little um, outdoor. Uh, area roof so you could put your dry goods in there so you know if they were getting pulled off the ship or dumped onto the ship or whatnot. Uh, the roof itself, we've got four of the uh, four of the straight or modular roofs, the straight roofs. Uh, it's got a large soffit peak on this side and a pair of the regular rustic soffits on this side. It's topped off with a cupola and a two-inch peak. Uh, then it's got a pair of the uh, the projecting beam biscuit inserts there, uh, as well as uh, we put them in the uh, side here to have it make it feel like it's rugged beam construction. So we're gonna pop this roof off and see underneath here. Uh, underneath here we have, this is a four by four fieldstone floor with four of the new banister corner posts on there. Those are holding up the roof, making a nice open air area, like easy uh, easy flow for minis, easy to pop that off and get in there. Well, combat if you need it. Uh, the floor has the two by one, uh, fieldstone insert in there. So in this case, we're using the uh, sewer grate side. So there's a neat little grate. Uh, the other side is plain stone. So you can flip it around if you want to just have a solid plain floor or knock it out if you want the stairs or trap door there. We're resting this floor uh, on the insides of three seawalls. So we're using the bastions and the uh, sewer grate side of the three seawalls. And uh, then some 25 millimeter cobblestone risers, which then flow into these cobblestone risers back here. So that, that lets, by putting it in there, it gets in, in line with the, uh, with the seawalls, makes a nice smooth uh, transition. Uh, we're transitioning down over here. We're using two of the secret door panels as little ramps to transition uh, down. Of this, we have a uh, four inch scaffolding platform biscuited right into the, uh, the side of this seawall. So we could even actually pull these pilings off and stay up, but they kind of look neat. So we have them on there. Uh, and then on this side, we're using the cobblestone ramp to transition this up from, we've got a two by two, pair of two by two uh, cobblestone risers into a pair of the 25 millimeter cobblestone risers. There is a two inch scaffolding platform sideways biscuited in there. And then it's got more of those projecting beam inserts, whatever to make it once again, look kind of rugged. Uh, and then we have two of these, these are two by one cobblestone stairs transitioning up to this upper bridge, which we'll look at uh, at the end here. Uh, continuing on this direction, 
we have, uh, we're using, once again, scaffolding platforms to make more docks. In this case, the uh, pilings are in the low mode. So, so it's a like different height than these docks. The more you can have different heights in there, it just feels more interesting, more real. Uh, and it's more interesting and more interesting for the players, right? There's no more dynamics and verticality, especially if they're jumping or shooting or line of sight. Who knows what, what shenanigans will ensue. Uh, coming around off this diagonal, we come up to uh, another height. This is, once again, a scaffolding platform in high mode. Uh, it's got the 25 millimeter stairs biscuit to the side, uh, and they're just leaning up against the side of these docks. And then transitioning up here, we have, this is a, another four inch scaffolding platform with the double pilings in high mode uh, with the footers, the piling footers for an inch rise on there. Those are uh, pegged into the bottom of those to lift this up super high. It transitions down with the 25 millimeter stairs, but it's still in line with this building. So uh, the door opens nice and cleanly. And we've topped this thing off with the uh, hoist pull accessory. So you can use that to pick up um, pick up goods, or maybe if someone wants to swing off it or throw it at a, uh, a foe or something. Coming on over here, we're continuing our docks, and this we're using the little stone steps, uh, these little guys, to transition us up to the, uh, this is two inches high, this is using a pair of the half arches, another pair of the half arches. These are each biscuited together, and then we're using this is the diagonal backfill cobblestone piece. That's biscuited to both of these, so it's suspended off. It's cantilevered out. Uh, and then it has the hanging ladder biscuit into it, so this is a neat spot you could put your rowboat or get in and out of the water if you need. Uh, and then we come on over. We've got two more pairs of those half arches. There are tons of half arches in this thing, so there's a lot of building potential with all this urban elevation. Um, th that has another of the projecting beam biscuit inserts at the end, uh, and then it has the scaffolding platform uh, biscuited to it. The far side of the platform is just resting on the seawall. We could biscuit it to the side of the building, but it's resting on the seawall right now in case we want to sort of move it or adjust something in the middle of combat. And all of these arches are uh, open, so you can, minis could pass through uh, if they wanted to, then heading on what happens uh, in this encounter. Over here in this building, we have, I don't know if this is some sort of grand mill or maybe it's a rich merchant's mill or something it's got some fancy uh, stone and windows and whatnot uh who knows what lurks inside uh, what what is this water wheel actually powering uh so the, the water wheel has let's see if we pop it up this is our first prototype it has uh these removable struts on the sides it will uh, these will have biscuit holes so it will be biscuited inside of the building uh you could also use them you could invert it if you wanted to hang it off um, between a couple of floors or something like that. There's going to be a lot of places you can put this thing using these biscuit holes. Uh, and the final one will be able to rotate in the uh, in the braces. Right now, this prototype does not quite a rotate, but fits a little tight. Uh, it's large enough inside to fit a miniature in there, maybe even two if you want to get it cozy. So you can use it as like a uh, tread wheel crane or something. I'm sure you will find a lot of fun uses for this water wheel when we get there. Actually, I'll leave it off so we can see the rest of this building. So this building, we've got, um, looking over this area, we have this kind of interesting shape here. It's a great example of how the modular roofs, if you can build it with these city builder pieces, you'll find a way to cover it with their roofs. So using a straight, a pair, three hips, and a valley, we have this neat little uh, irregular shape. And we're also using an LED uh, dormer here with uh, the rustic wood shutters in it. We can lift this whole thing off. Oh, it also has... It has a little soffit here uh, connected to the side, so it has that nice little overlap with the building. It helps it make it feel more real and sort of all tied together. So these are all biscuited together, so you can pop them off as one unit and see the room below. We've got a 4x4 four four room here and a little tiny 2x2 two two room. We're using the 2x2 two two floor, the narrow walls, uh, and lots of doors, right? There's ways in. You can get in here, you can get in here, and you can actually connect them to the other building from there. Uh, speaking of the other part of the building, the top of this thing, we're starting with, um, it's got four of the modular roof hips. I'll put together a kind of tower roof style with a little uh, magnetic chimney on the top there. And then underneath, this layer is using uh, four of the abbey windows, as well as the gargoyle uh, biscuit hole fillers uh, to really kind of decorate it up to make it look fine and fancy, which indeed it does. And then it's, we've knocked the, the uh, Two by one insert is not in here, so you can put some stairs going down to the level below. Um, the level below is another 
four by four, and it's got a pair of these uh, straight roofs on the back with the uh, it's got a soffit again wrapping around the side of the building, and that gets us down to a four by six room here uh, that connects in through these. This door connects it down, and it connects into this, and it has a lion before color starts going out with some ramps. Uh, so pl tons of playable space inside a building, and then finally, so underneath here we have. Uh, the base, this is just a two by four uh, fieldstone floor with walls and narrow walls built in line with the uh, the sea walls, right? So it's just, it's built in line with a pair of sea walls right against the battle board here. This could transition into uh, the sewers or something if you wanted. Um, then to level it out, because this is one floor height higher than the tops of the sea walls, we have a, just another two by four floor here and a... Um, a two by two floor here. So this section of the building is one floor height higher, but it all kind of flows together neatly and the roofs connect it pretty seamlessly. Interesting height variances. So this is up one floor higher than the rest of this building. And we're able to use these ramps in the back to sort of transition this up to the different levels. We have, this is the, the uh, corbel row, straight wooden corbel row facade on the front there to further make this look like a little bit of an industrial building, right? Heart of medieval industry, the water wheel. Yeah. All right, I'll pop this roof back on it. And let's come around this side. Uh, oh, on the corner, before we get to that, we have our freestanding LED street lamp here. A little lampy of a lamp post. Uh, this guy has a switch and a battery and an LED baked in, so you can pop it anywhere. You can put it in your dungeon, you can put it in your cavern, put it by your castle, or in this case, put it by your dockside. Uh, we've got four of those populated around uh, the build in all sort of the corners. Creates a lot of life in the build. Uh, coming around to the back here, uh, we're using some cobblestone floor pieces to make a little raised walkway here as part of this building. So it's a two by two cobblestone floor into a uh, the cobblestone backfill, the large backfill there, uh, into this is the ramp extension that gets us up to this door height up there. Uh, and then we're using the cobblestone ramp in the front to uh, transition up to that. So it's a fun use of just the cobblestone pieces, cobblestone on top of more cobblestone. Uh, and it all flows together because it's all cobblestone tops. And then the back here we have uh, another cobblestone ramp going into this line for cobblestone arch. And then over here, we've made like a decorative lamp post using four of the 25 millimeter uh, cobblestone risers with a two by two cobblestone floor on top. And then it's taking the uh, LED lamp post with these are the little uh, these little flower boxes from uh, the window insert. We dress those on either side of it, and then some of the ivy, the freestanding ivy, so it makes it a nice uh, little decorative lantern post area. Coming over here. We have our only uh, wooden building in the whole thing. This is the only instance of wood. And it's a pretty neat uh, shape, right? We wanted some little building overhanging the canal kind of with a bunch of character uh, to give a little more visual variety to this build. Uh, so this is kind of starting from the top down. We've got an uh, interesting shape of roof here. So we're using the poet's nook. So two diagonals here, two straights here. There's a hip in the back. And then we're going into, this is the wizard hat roof. On the top, topping off, this is the um, octagonal tower of the dangle room there. And so we're, we've got the narrow shutter inserts in all these windows. Uh, we're using the uh, projecting beam biscuit inserts as well as the rivet biscuit hole inserts and the little gargoyle biscuit inserts. So this thing is kind of covered with lots of fun little details. Makes it look like a very characterful house. It's also got the LED uh, dormer at the top, magnetically attached there with the magnetic shutters and magnetic chimney. If we can pop this, uh, pop this roof off to see inside, we've got in here the large, large diagonal with the dangle room. There's a door out the back and another door out the back using these uh, diagonals. You could also swap this for another window wall. We have a couple window walls left over, uh, and we have this is the narrow. Uh, it's the corner railing scaffolding platform against this wall with the, uh, the 61 millimeter stairs thing in there. So it's an, another way to get up into this main part of the building. Um, underneath, we've done something kind of neat with the base here. So this is uh, this 
prototype got damaged and we didn't have time to repair it, but we have a, a damaged prototype here. We got a pair of the half uh, arches with the two by two cobblestone floor in between them with a the little gargoyle um, biscuit insert in there. And then underneath them, we we got the, uh, this is the boarded up window insert against the side. It's like some, uh, it's like a crate. Um, well, this is the double door wall from uh, the Keelstone double door wall. So we're using that underneath uh, as like a, this could be an entrance to a, this could be sort of the warehouse area for maybe it's the merchant's house or something, or they, they store stuff here before it goes out to sea. But so cool, cool way to get in there. And then the back we're using, this is the, uh, another two by four floor with another of the uh, Fieldstone double doors back there. Uh, so it's, what's neat is we can use the Fieldstone in line with the, um, this is the urban elevation pieces and it creates a cool stone foundation for the rest of this wooden building here. Yeah. And if we're placing it on, we're actually, we, we're putting it, um, it is offset by about a half an inch, so it feels a little more real. I love this sort of the overhang. When this side overhangs and then the side overhangs, it uh, makes the whole thing feel more like medieval Tudor buildings instead of everything lining up nice and clean. Oh, this whole thing is built on, right, so we have our, our battle board, our new sculpted textured cobblestone battle board, big 12 by 12 battle board. It is, uh, it's resting on these five seawalls here. So this is the bastions of the seawall back that are holding this up here. And then on the other, on the back side here, we're holding it up with, we have four of the 25 millimeter risers. Four of these guys are underneath holding it up from the back. So we can lift very quickly and easily lift up a big section of our, um, our city and uh, it transitions really nicely down into the water. All right, so transitioning from this battle board over to this bridge, let's get this out of the way so we can see what we're doing here. Uh, we have a cobblestone ramp, right? We're using this thing all over the place uh, to transition us up to this bridge area. This is all the half arches. So we have a pair of them biscuited together here. There's a pair of them here with a two by two cobblestone uh, street biscuit between them. Uh, this is using the, uh, these are the ivy post skins and they're, they're pegged into the biscuit slots. So the biscuit slots have basically peg holes on the far sides of them. So we're pegging a pair of those into the biscuit slot to create this kind of ID arch over it. And then inside them, we have a solid, narrow field stone wall. And this is the uh, lion portcullis arch with no portcullis in it. If you wanted, we could just pop this. This is all biscuited together, right? We could pop the, uh, we could pop the lion arch out to make more room for ships to come through. And this is the narrow field zone. We'll keep that in there to keep that solid and drop that back in. Um, then this transitions into, there's another pair of the half arches and these ones are the solid side out. So it feels, it's like one solid chunk and then one more pair. And this one has arch side out over here and it has another, uh, field stone narrow wall in there, sealing it up. Although it doesn't make a nice little, uh, nook. You could hide something there. Uh, and we're using the Ivy. We got freestanding Ivy here to kind of transition this up from the water. Maybe it's seaweed or gunk that's uh, accumulated there over centuries of, of never being cleaned. So this is sort of transitions us up to this. I see we're doing that same uh, gag of the front uh, here uh, as well as all the way in the back with the um, and the little lamp post. Because uh, this, this fruit setting ivy just looks good anywhere, right? It brings a little bit of life to your city, a lived-in look. Uh, on the corner here, we have our, our fourth led lamp post uh and then we have our final building the wharf watch and this is like the big watchtower lighthouse that gives wharf watch its name uh this whole thing it's a four by four base it's built on top of the sea walls so previously we built this guy was built uh inside on the on the projecting bastions right so it's in line with the sea walls All right so we're put we're going right on top of the sea walls so this one's sort of kicked out a little bit. So it's on top of these these two. So then the floor, the top of the floor lines up with the top of um, these two by twos, the uh, the half arches, the two inch high half arches. And we're using ivy once again to transition this up into spot. So by putting it up there, once again, more more height variance, more interesting uh, verticality, uh, and that real smooth smooth transition from these right into 
the double doors. So the, the ground floor here is all the double high field stone. We're using the double high field stone double door wall and the rest of the walls are the solid magnetic walls. This IBA here transitions up. Uh, it's capped off at the top with, we're using the um, uh, long wooden corbel row facade there to help tie that together and give it a sort of tough, rugged look. Uh, and continuing that rugged look with more, four more of these uh, projecting beam uh, biscuit hole fillers on the sides. Uh, the level above, this is, what's, we didn't even look into it. This is four arrow slit walls, right? So it's a four by four with the arrow slit walls. So this could be where the, uh, the guards hang out and wait if somebody sees something up above in the watchtower, they can alert them and they can protect the, uh, protect the bay from here. There's playable space in both in here and in there. Uh, and then we come up to the, the top level. We're oh, sick to roof off, so we see what we're doing. Top level up here, we have a four by four killstone floor with the railings, biscuit on the sides, and the uh, banister corner post there. So it makes it a nice little uh, lookout tower area. Uh, as if that wasn't enough to look at, we have the roof, the top, it's four of the straight roofs, the uh, soffit peak the front and then it's a cupola with a couple of the hanging shield biscuit inserts and then it's using our narrow uh narrow window walls to make a little tiny lookout tower or maybe this is a lighthouse right you put a light in here and this is the beacon for the ships topped off with a little two inch peak roof uh so hopefully this will give you uh give you an idea of some of the many things you can build uh with wharf watch thank you so much for watching for worth watching.